Macmillan Audio presents Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty. Read for you by Caroline Lee. Prologue The bike lay on the side of the road beneath a grey oak, the handlebars at an odd, jutted angle, as if it had been thrown with angry force. It was early on a Saturday morning, the fifth day of a heat wave. More than 40 bushfires continued to blaze doggedly across the state. Six regional towns had evacuate now warnings in place, but here in suburban Sydney, the only danger was to asthma sufferers who were advised to stay indoors. The smoke haze that draped the city was a malicious yellow-grey, as thick as a London fog. The empty streets were silent, apart from the subterranean roar of cicadas. People slept after restless hot nights of jangled dreams, while early risers yawned and thumb-scrolled their phone screens. The discarded bike was shiny new, advertised as a vintage lady's bike. Mint green, seven-speed, with a tan leather saddle and a white wicker basket. The sort of bike you are meant to imagine riding in the cool, crisp air of a European mountain village, wearing a soft beret rather than a safety helmet, a baguette tucked under one arm. Four green apples lay scattered on the dry grass beneath the tree, as if they had spilled and rolled from the bike's basket. A family of black blowflies sat poised at different points on the bike's silver spokes, so still, they looked dead. The car, a Holden Commodore V8, vibrated with the beat of 80s rock as it approached from the intersection, inappropriately fast in this family neighbourhood. The brake lights flashed and the car reversed with a squeal of tyres until it was parked next to the bike. The music stopped. The driver emerged, smoking a cigarette. He was skinny, barefoot and bare-chested, wearing nothing but blue football shorts. He left the driver's door open and tiptoed with balletic, practised grace across the already hot asphalt and onto the grass, where he hunkered down to study the bike. He caressed the bike's punctured front tyre as if it were the limb of a wounded animal. The flies buzzed, suddenly alive and worried. The man looked up and down the empty street, took a narrow-eyed drag of his cigarette, shrugged, and then grabbed the bike with one hand and stood. He walked to his car and laid it in his boot like a purchase, deftly popping off the front wheel with the quick-release lever to make it fit. He got back in the car, slammed the door shut, and drove off, wrapping the beat to ACDC's Highway to Hell on his steering wheel, pleased with himself. Yesterday had been Valentine's Day, apparently, and he didn't believe in that capitalist shit, but he was going to give the bike to his wife and say, Happy late Valentine's Day, babe, with an ironic wink, and that would make up for the other day, and odds were he'd get lucky tonight. He didn't get lucky. He got very unlucky. Twenty minutes later, he was dead, killed instantly in a head-on collision. A semi-trailer driver from interstate didn't see a stop sign concealed by an overgrown liquid amber. Local residents had been complaining for months about that sign. It was an accident waiting to happen, they said. And now it had happened. The apples rotted fast in the heat. Chapter 1 Two men and two women sat in the far corner of a cafe underneath the framed photo of sunflowers at dawn in Tuscany. They were basketball player tall, and as they leaned forward over the mosaic-topped round table, their foreheads almost touched. They spoke in low, intense voices, as if their conversation involved international espionage, which was incongruous in this small suburban cafe on a pleasant, summery Saturday morning. 